In this video, I'm going to cover the basics of components in React. Components are essentially the basic building blocks that we use to create React applications. And in React, there are two key subgroups of components that we should be familiar with. The first one are functional components, and the second one are class components. We're going to go into both, but let's start with functional components. Over here in VS Code, I have a very simple React app open, and it is in fact the React app that comes pre-installed once you install React, which is what we did in the very first video of the series. But I do want to mention that I have simplified this file. I have removed everything that we don't need anymore. So the file structure is a bit shorter than the one that comes with the pre-installed app. So let me briefly in one sentence go through what you can see on the screen at the moment before I go into functional components. At the very top in the editor, you can see the index.html file. Now in there we have a header that has a title, React app, and in addition to that, we have a pair of body tags within which we have a div with the ID root. And below that, we have the index.js file open. And in this file, we only have two imports. We're importing React from React and we're importing the React DOM, which stands for Document Object Model, from the React DOM client. Now let's talk about function components. Function components are essentially JavaScript functions that may receive arguments, otherwise known as properties, but must include a return statement. And another very important thing that you need to know when you create your first function component is that it needs to start off with a capital letter. So to create a function component, we first need to write the keyword function, and then we have to write the name of the function component. I'm simply going to call it function component, and then we add a pair of empty brackets. Now we add a pair of curly brackets, and within the curly brackets, we're first going to write the return statement that is a must. And after that, we can go ahead and add the HTML, which should be returned whenever this function is called. I'm simply going to add a pair of h1 tags within which I'm going to write, this is a function component. Now that we've created this very first function component, the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to show it within our browser. And we can do that by rendering it. And if we want a script written in JavaScript to render something within our browser, we of course need to tell it where to do so. And that is where DOM methods come in. Now, if you're not familiar with those, I recommend watching the third video in this series, which I'm going to be linking down in the description below. In any case, what we can do is we can define the constant root and set that equal to react DOM dot create root. And then in parentheses, we get an element by ID and specifically, we want to get the root. Now, if you look up into the HTML document, you'll see that within the body tags, there's one div which has an ID called root. And that is precisely the element that we are referencing by writing document.getElementById root. So the last thing that we need to do in order for the HTML code that is returned by the function component to be inserted within the div tags with the ID root is we need to write root.render and in brackets, we need to call the function component. Now I can navigate onto the My React App folder, right click on it and then click on open an integrated terminal. And once the terminal opens up, I can simply write npm and then start and that will start up the React application within the browser. Within the browser window that opens up, you can now clearly see that it says this is a function component. And the text over here is the result of the function component that we created. If we right click within the browser window and then click on the inspector, the inspector opens up and within the inspector, you can actually see the HTML code. And if we take a close look at the HTML code, you can see that the H1 tags with the text this is a function component, was in fact inserted within the div tag with the ID root. Now that we know what a function component looks like, let's move on to class components. There are two things that you should know right from the beginning when it comes to class components. The first thing is that 
every single class component must include the statement extends react component. This creates inheritance to react component and gives the component access to some necessary functions. And the second thing is that every class component must include a render function. And this render function must have a return statement with HTML code. So let's go ahead and create the very first class component. We start off by writing the keyword class, and then we give our component a name. We're simply going to call it class component. After that, we need to write extends and then react.component. Then within curly brackets, we need to write render and then open another pair of curly brackets within which we include a return statement that returns HTML. And in this case, I'm simply going to write h1 tags within which I'm going to write this is a class component. To show the result of this class component within our browser window, the last thing we need to do is we need to call this class component by writing class component over here within the brackets. And now within the browser window, you can see that it says this is a class component. And again, if we go ahead and right click to open the inspector and have a look at the HTML code, you can again see that the h1 tags with the text have been inserted within the div tags that have the ID root. The next thing that you should be aware of is that it is possible to nest components within each other. All possible combinations are possible. You can nest function components within other function components. You can nest class components within function components, function components within class components, and class components within class components. Let me demonstrate this using one simple example. I'm going to copy and paste the class component we just created. The first class component I'm going to call class component one, and it is going to return a call to class component two. And the class component below that I'm going to call class component two, and it is going to return within h1 tags the text. This is a class component and I'm going to add two behind that. And matter of fact, I'm going to remove the A so the sentence also makes sense. So now within the browser window, you can see that it says this is class component two. And this is a result of the nested class component because we're calling class component one, which in turn is calling class component two. All right, we're gonna leave it here. If this video helped you out, make sure to give it a like and see you in the next video.